Welcome back to Black News Tonight. From the Reagan revolution of the 1980s onward, right-wing evangelicals have had a growing influence over U.S. society, forming a solid voting bloc that has helped to pack courts and elect politicians all around the country. Right now, from denying climate change to stoking anti-immigrant and anti-Muslim sentiment to declaring war on critical race theory, right-wing Christian groups are becoming even more politicized and even more dangerous. And it is turning many Americans not just against the political dimension of it, but maybe even against religion itself. My next guest is here to tackle this controversy head on. His name is Obrey Hendricks Jr. and he teaches religion and African-American studies at Columbia University. He's also an ordained elder in the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Obrey Hendricks, thank you so much for joining me on Black News tonight. Uh, your book title is called Christians Against Christianity. What does that mean? Well, thank you. Thank you for having me, Mark. Well, yeah, Christians Against Christianity. Essentially, um, you know, right-wing evangelicals are, uh, what they are doing in their teaching is really the antithesis of the teachings of the Bible. Certainly, the antithesis of the teachings of the gospel, you know, the with the hatred for many, the insecurity, misinformation. Um, it is, it's, it's, they really are an anti-Christian movement. They are an anti-democratic movement um, and they are very destructive. And they really, we really might need to come up with another name for them other than uh, evangelical Christians because they are not particularly Christian in the way that they are doing things. You talk about sort of um, how these movements have become increasingly less in line with the teachings of uh, Christianity, with the spirit of Christianity. How does this happen? How do right-wing evangelical uh, groups get to the space that they're in right now? Yeah, yeah. Well, if we look at this modern um, right-wing evangelical movement in, in this moment, um, they really go back to the 80s. They got their their start uh, with Jerry Falwell and others of his ilk, um, who are segregationists and who um, whipped up um, the white populace into a, a fury over desegregation. You, you might re recall um, th that uh, Jerry Falwell, um, they were fighting over the Bob Johnson School in um, in South Carolina that didn't want to desegregate. They said the Lord said that uh, uh, races should be separate. And so they, they started there, and then about in, uh, around 1980, a group of them got together, and they were trying to decide how could they, um, what strategy could they use to dominate American society? Um, and they came up with some wedge issues, they called them, um, that they would use to whip up the populace, and they were um, homosexuality, uh, same-sex marriage, and abortion. And since that time, they have used these wedge issues um, in, with, without integrity at all to whip folk up into a fury. And then they infused it. Uh, well, the racial issue was always there. The racism was always there. And then with, when Barack Obama became president and uh, Trump uh, weighed in with all of his lies about, uh, about Obama, from there you have this, this um, toxic brew um, of, of racism and hatred masquerading as Christianity, um, which talks doesn't talk about love or justice or, or anything at all. It, it is an ideological movement masquerading as Christianity. And, and, and I love that you talk about this. You're talking about a kind of departure from a real Christianity. Um, you have another book that came out years ago called The Politics of Jesus, um, where you yes. talk about what Jesus stood for. And you, you, you help us understand uh, what it means within the proper context to follow the teachings in the life of Jesus. I mean, if you think about Jesus through that framework of Luke 4, 18, right? The spirit of the Lord is upon me to teach good news to the poor, right? And you begin there to free the captive, right? When, you, when we start to think about those kinds of things, that's very different than the right-wing authoritarianism that they're talking about. But it seems to me that if, if, if the teachings are so, are so good and progressive and these evangelicals are so to the right, how did they get 
so much control. They don't make up the majority of Americans. They don't even make up the majority of Christians. So how did the right wing get so much power? How did the evangelicals take this thing over? Well, you know, they appeal to uh, to the un they've appealed to the underlying white nationalism, white supremacist sensibilities of of America. I mean, it's it's is that is that simple? They didn't get this powerful by appealing to the love ethic of the Bible, talking about freeing captives and uh, treating immigrants uh, humanely. They got this power by um, playing to the worst instincts of white folks. Let's 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 be honest about it. And, and so, oh. I mean, they're at the point, you won't hear them mention the word love at all or justice at all. Loving neighbors, that's not in their Bible anymore. It's all now about control and a power and domination. And as I say in, uh, in uh, Christians Against Christianity, they're trying, their goal is to get everybody to genuflect at the altar of their convoluted, um, uh, mean-spirited readings of the Bible. So what do black folk do? Because my concern, and not that I don't care about everybody, but I love black folk, and this is black news tonight. What do I say to my black Christian viewers who are watching this saying, well, he ain't talking about my Jesus. They ain't talking about my Jesus. That's, that's they thing. But at the same time, black folk are sometimes buying into these wedge issues. Some of us are voting against our interests because of the issues you raised. What's the message for black people? Well, the message for, for black people is to look away uh, from all of these charlatans and go back and and uh, if they are serious about their their Christianity, um, to go back to the biblical text itself and read it for themselves and read scholars who are not um, in the pocket of the powers that be, myself and others. There are there there are a number of others. Um, and go back and and focus on you know what Jesus said. Um, the spirit of the Lord is upon him, not to holler and shout and bump his head on the ceiling, but to bring good news to the poor. Good news to the poor is not that some folks will become rich while others uh, stay poor. It is that the systems and, and, and the, the systemic structures and the relationships and policies and laws that make people poor and keep them poor will be changed. They have to go back and see Jesus as being a very radical, uh, a very radical figure. And um, they have not done that. Um, and, and that's and that's a, a very important point that they have to make. Forgive me, my uh, my laptop for some reason is dying. I have to plug it in here. That's embarrassing, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't change what we have to say here. That is the point. We have to go back and we have to look at Jesus as a radical figure who wanted love and justice for everybody in this world, um, and and uh, and not just um, um, uh, empowering the few. And he certainly wasn't trying to keep those in power. Um, in power, remain in power. Stay with me, brother, because the message remains the same, whether I plug it in or not. And uh, <laughs> look, brother, if, there if, we, if we can stretch five barley loaves and two fishes, we can make your laptop work. His name there is Dr. Obrey. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, brother. His name is Dr. Obrey Hendricks, and he is honestly, family, one of the most brilliant minds in our country, and certainly one of the most brilliant religious scholars of his generation. Every single book that Obrey Hendricks has written has been extraordinary, and it has changed the way we think about it. Not just scholars, but also everyday folk. It'll help you think about your faith differently. It will help shape your politics differently. You can still get your shout on in church. But at the same time, it's going to force Absolutely. you to reimagine what it means to operate from a yes. love ethic. So, Obrey, thank you so much for joining me on Black News tonight. And everybody, I want you to go out and grab this book. It is called Christians Against Christianity. Christians Against Christianity. How right-wing evangelicals are destroying our nation and our faith. You can buy anywhere books are sold, but my favorite place to get it is Uncle Bobby's. That's Uncle B-O-B-B-I-E-S dot com. You can get the book there. Ask for Uncle Bobby or for me. I got a guy there. Still to come on Black News tonight, we got...